It's good. She'll be coming out in a minute. Are you hard to say she was? Huh? Are you wet? Oh, wow, that's weird. <laughs> I didn't get the water. Oh. I got behind it. <laughs> well, I have had time now when you had to get in the water and everything else. I didn't realize it was Yeah. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for the gift that you have given us the gift of salvation. But Lord, this gift didn't come cheap. You paid the supreme price by giving your only son. Through his shed blood, God, uh, we're saved. And by obedience to what Jesus' word says, boy, we become followers of you. I lift up my sister now to you, Father, that this will be the beginning of a great new beginning. I pray things for her that she never thought she could attain a thing that she never thought she could do, she'll do it. I pray financial prosperity over her right now. A brand new beginning. In Jesus' name, amen. Sometimes you really don't know how to start a message. Uh, but God gave me something a while back, and this is the second series of it, the spiritual gift of discernment. And a question can be asked, and we're going to try to answer some questions this morning if we get into the Word of God. But what I'd like to do first is read Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 16. And then we'll get on with it. I have to turn as well. Matthew chapter 7, starting with verse 16. Let me know when you have it by saying amen. Amen. Amen and amen. The Bible reads accordingly, Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 16. You shall know, what did I say? 13 through 16. That's verses 13 through 16. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now this is serious. Few be that find it. Verse 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistle? But it says, beware of false prophets. Okay. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. And it says, To another, the working of miracles, we talk about spiritual gifts. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. What we want to touch on this morning is the gift of discernment. And I believe this gift, well, we're going to get into that. So let me ask you a question this morning. Don't you want to know what is of God and what isn't of God? Especially as we get older, there are different meanings. When we were younger, we had different thoughts and we went about doing different things. The older we get, those thoughts seem to change and we no longer want to do. We want to do whatever we can do in the time period that we're living. But I want to know the truth. I don't need a bunch of hot water. The older I get, I need to know the truth. To be overcomers. False teachers will only lead you down a false path and there is no results as you lead as you follow false teachers. False preachers are false people who are trying to make you succumb to whatever they want or whatever they believe. They really don't care about you. They just want you to do what they want you to do. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I want to be free. 
to understand the Word of God and the revelation of God through the Holy Spirit in order for me to fulfill my life as a believer. True teachers will only lead you down a path that leads you into greater results. The Bible says the truth will set you free. That means the lie will keep you in bondage. Do we need discernment today? Well, I do believe that we, as we get deeper into this century and the way we're going and we're seeing it now, we're seeing things today we never thought we'd see a few years ago, but we're seeing them now. We're living in them now. We need to know discernment. And I can go on that for a long time. And I want to get into what the message God has for us this morning. For Satan is given his last wing at the church right now. And you can see it with many false teachings, with many different types of teachings. People telling you to do this to get that, do that to get this. I say this, you follow Jesus, He's going to give you what you need. He's going to give you what you need. Amen? Let's talk about the gift of discernment in the church today. We just read about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. And I asked a question and I've already answered it. Do we need this gift today? And as far as I'm concerned, the answer is yes. For the same reason now, others at the beginning of the church age needed it. I call it the first church. They needed it. They were given it. Don't you think we need it? We need it today as well. At the beginning of the church age, the gift was desperately needed. We of today are of no difference. The church today needs to and has to be centered around Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has got to be the reason and the purpose. Why do we come to church? We come to church to enter into the presence of God. I love that last song that we saw and, and if you're to follow the word and start putting your name in there and start claiming the promises of God uh, I believe you would see a healing in your body as we were singing and worshiping Jesus Christ Amen. keep in mind in the Old Testament before they went to battle they had the, they had the worshipers they had the singers that led into battle and I want to see more people worshiping God and flag and dance. I want to see that because we are in a spiritual battle right now. Satan is doing everything he can to steal, rob, and kill. He's trying to steal your finances. He's trying to steal your health. He's trying to steal your self-worth. And it's time to put those praising worshipers in front. And as we go into battle, we need to go into battle praising and worshiping God and praising God and blowing the chauffeur as we're going into battle. This is a battle that Satan wants your kids. What are we hearing so much about today? Woman's health. I'm trying to figure out how abortion got anything to do with woman's health. I have not yet figured it out. But you see, the enemy is trying to come in and whitewash something that is evil. Amen? Amen. 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 If woman's worried about uh, not having an abortion, well, I know how to stop it real quick. Amen? Amen? And I'm not getting into that. But our kids today need to be taught on not how to stop, but rather how to prevent by not doing. Amen. And the Father's house is going to teach and is going to preach that. I have love for those who have already had it. I want you to know that. God is a forgiving God. Well, let's get on. The same devil that was around in the early church is still around today. Right now as we speak. I believe it's James and Paul and Peter and those walk. The devil that was there then is the same devil that we're faced with today. And if they needed that gift, don't you think we need it? I need it. I want it. I want to know how to make right decisions. I want to know how to make proper decisions. I want to know how to walk in the light of God. Amen. The Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 3, you don't have because you don't ask. Now we're not putting God in the corner. Now God will not be put in the corner. And I want you to, I want you to understand this. You can't tell God what to do because you don't know what tomorrow may bring. But God does. Pray and believe. And that's what I do. I pray and I believe. I don't tell God how. 
I just say, God, you just answered the prayer by an ass being up here, standing up. But it's a miracle for her just to stand up for 30 minutes or 20 minutes. And then she comes up here waving up, worshiping God, and then the ministry time. This is a miracle, and we have seen it. Let's give God glory. Amen. God wants to do the same thing for you and your family and your children as well. Amen. 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 Many in the church today don't have because they don't believe. They don't believe they need, so they go about living a defeated, frustrated life. And I'm not condemning, I'm trying to lead them into the path of the light of Jesus Christ. You can be saved and still not have the gift. Do you know that? Amen. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit. But if Jesus gave the gift, not if, but Jesus gave the gift for a reason and a purpose. Why should I say I don't need it today? I need it today because I know who I am. Amen. And I need that. For a lot of them, they don't think they need this gift. Because they're so spiritually high, they don't need to come down to listen to God. They got everything. They got baptized, whatever, 20, 30, 40 years ago, and they need to stay on the stage just like they are. Well, if they stay just like they are, guess what? They are just like they are. But I believe my walk with Christ Jesus is on a daily basis. Amen? I want to get close to God. I want to get I can't get close to God without the Holy Spirit drawing me to Jesus. I can't get to God without the blood of Jesus Christ. But I need to walk with Jesus day by day. Every day. Let's say this. I'll say it like this. And y'all heard this too. You got married 40 years ago, but you've never seen your wife since you said I do. What kind of relationship is that? You don't have the foggiest idea of what's going on in her life. She don't have the foggiest idea of what's going on in your life. If you're never coming to the house of God, if you're never study and never worship together. You don't know what's going on. People who don't come to the Father's house do not know what's going on in the Father's house. Amen. 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 And if they want to know, don't ask me. Come and let God show you. Amen. 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 Or maybe they just don't ask. For those who don't believe or don't ask, Generally, they find fault with those who do believe and for those who do ask. They always find fault with you. Oh, you this and you that. You better dog on well. Hurry up and believe it. I'm a follower of the king. I'm a follower of Jesus. Yes, I go to church every time the door is open. You the pastor, you're supposed to. I know that. I even tithe to the church. You really? Yeah. I give sometimes 20, 25 percent. You do that? You're a fanatic. Yes, I am. I'm a fanatic for Jesus. He's the one who give you life. Do you know what? I've walked with people, and, and, and I have. I've walked through the years of the ministry with people that they would give everything they have. Now listen to me. And this is not only one time. I have walked with many people from the time they contracted cancer to their body was laid to rest. And I've seen people would have given everything they had for one breath of life. Everything for one breath. How valuable is a breath? It's more valuable than anything you have. Amen? So why not now? I'm doing pretty good breathing. How many here is doing good breathing? Amen. Amen? If you don't think so, hold your breath for 15 minutes and we'll come lay hands on it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The gift, the spiritual gift of this sermon in the church today. If you don't have ask, James says you have not because you ask not, then you want to use it for whatever. I say this, ask and receive to glorify Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Use the gift to glorify Jesus Christ. And help each other. Help each other. Don't find fault. Help. Amen? Amen. The gift of the sermon is this. To give someone else the ability to know whether it is really the Spirit of God Another spirit that is speaking. Isn't that important? What's a counterfeit? A counterfeit, you got to have a real before you can have a counterfeit. You can't have a counterfeit without first having a real. Amen? So, so if we have the real word of God, Satan is going to come in with a counterfeit. It's going to sound almost as good. 
It's going to almost be, you know, I'm going to be blessed if I knew this instead of doing that. Well, you need the gift of discernment, the spiritual gift of discernment, to know if you do that, what is going to be the result of doing that from someone who is speaking, not from the throne room of God, but speaking from themselves. I need to know if somebody, I look, a movement might sound good. Oh, we like that. Look what's happening. Look, oh, we like that. But then you get to Scripture, and it don't quite line up with Scripture. Well, if it don't quite line up with Scripture, the gift of the Spirit of discernment will tell you to get out of there. If it don't line up with Scripture, I don't want it. Because when I'm dead, amen, my faith has got to line up with Scripture in order, come on, now you say, well, brother, break me again. What does it say in Matthew? There's going to be a lot of them that's not going to make it. Why? Because they're not following after Amen? Amen? And don't get mad at me if I say it. I didn't say it really. I'm just reading because Jesus said it. A lot of these people who think they're going to heaven, they might just not make it. A lot of people who think they're going to heaven, they might just not make it either. So that, that's why we need this gift desperately today. I hear so much about speaking in tongues, and that's good too. That's a gift too. But I also need the gift of the sermon to know how and when and where to make the right decisions that God wants me to make. To me, that's the most important thing. And when we did not ask us praying, or you up here praying, you know, you know that's why worship and praise is so important to me because I just walk in and I get lost in the presence of God. I get lost in the presence of God. That's when God speaks to me. When we up here, uh, when we up here praying, I want the Holy Spirit to speak to me in order for me to speak to the spirit of the people's heart that needs to be spoken to. That's important. That's very important. Very important. We need to be able to know and recognize what was taught and what is being taught in our churches today. A lot of our kids can be led astray. A lot of them. If we can't, then there's a possibility that we are leading them down the wrong path. And I've been praying for a long time, Lord, we need to get a youth program. We need to, we need to get this started in this church. And it's time now to get it started. We got so many, it's time now, but we need a proper. Our kids today don't need to be fed a hot dog and popcorn. They need to be around spirit-filled kids and learn more about God. Amen. 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 Hey man, I can go get, you know, I had one kid tell me, he said, you know, Brother Gerald, I can go get a hot dog anywhere. I don't go to church to get a hot dog. I don't get a church, go to church to play games. I want to go to church to learn more about Jesus because I need it. Amen. We need it. Our kids need it. How are we going to keep our kids pure? We're going to keep our kids pure by teaching them the pure word of God. We don't need to have games and fun. There's nothing wrong with it, but in a proper perspective, they need to be fed the word of God because when they get out to church, the Satan and all the world is going to come upon them trying to take what they got. And if you're a little girl or a little boy, they try to, you know what they're trying to take. And it's time to come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to pray to put a hedge of protection around our kids. Amen. amen. So when the enemy comes, that hedge of protection, amen, they won't be able to penetrate in them and we won't have to worry about abortions. Amen. And I'm being honest. Amen. Because God gives life and life is precious. Amen. 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 If you don't think life is precious, just don't quit breathing for 15 minutes. Amen. That's all you got to do. Don't worry. We'll call about 11, 30 minutes from now. Don't get my call. Oh, they might. No, we 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 will take care of you. We will take care. I love you guys very much. I'm just talking. Ooh. And for our young people, if they're taught wrong in the church at an early age. This has the ability to cause havoc in their lives for a long time. I know adults right now, way up in their age. What they were taught many years ago is still causing them trouble. We need to be taught the truth. Amen? We need to be taught the truth. The church needs power teaching according to God's Word. The church needs proper doctrine taught. And you know how I believe about that. If you don't, then I'll write it out and go to our church webpage and you'll read it. The Father's House Worship Center about Lord. They'll tell you what we believe. Don't listen to what somebody else might say. Let's, let's find out from the truth. How to know if one is from God or one is not from God? The Spirit, the gift of discernment. Amen? The gift of discernment. 
The Bible, we just read it in Matthew 7, 15. The Bible says they are coming. If the Bible says they're coming, they're coming. But Jesus wouldn't have loved it. Everything is not peachy, hungry, dory, and all this other stuff. Amen? They're coming. So be aware. They're coming. They're here. And we need to be aware of it. They're like I now said, there's some sicknesses caused by demonic activity, and some not. And you get into the reading of the Word about that. Let Jesus, let the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. But don't be so prideful and proud that you don't want to come up and have prayer. You know what? The, the demonic guy that was, that, ooh, and, and he came up to and Jesus and, 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 and then he was set free because the demons were cast out and he was set free. How many people today have got addictions? Amen? The main thing, if you know you got addiction, let's get rid of it. Amen. I've been blessed. I really, I have been blessed my whole life. I've been blessed. I smoke because my dad smoked. I drink because my dad drank. But in the name of Jesus, I put them down. They were down. In the name of Jesus, I poured all that, that fire water out. It's gone. I don't have a problem with any of that. Amen? Amen. But maybe I got a problem with something else that I need to address. So let's don't put ourselves on a high horse and think we're better than anybody else because we're not better than anybody else. It's through the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus Christ that we are set free. Don't think you're better than anybody else. We're not. Because when you think you're better than anybody else, that's where your weakness comes up. Uh-huh. You will sink like the Titanic. Amen? That was the doom is when it hit the bottom of the ocean. Y'all didn't know that, did you? You know it now. Amen? We're not better than nobody else. Amen. Amen. We also need to know what is right and what is not right. Seeking the face of the Lord at all in all matters. Seek the face of the Lord. Seek to face the Lord. Amen. You know, in the church today, you don't hear much about the gift of the Son, spiritual gift. How many of y'all have heard it lately? I know I preached one message and you heard you. But, you know, it seems like we don't need those gifts anymore. We, we just go on our way. Everything is good. Our car's running. We got gas in it. And we just going. We don't know where we're going. But we try to get there fast. We need to slow down a little bit. We need to slow down. We need to slow down. Amen? Amen. And again, if we didn't need the gift, then God wouldn't have given it. That's the way I look at it. And I need it. I need everything that I can get to get through another day. I need everything that I can do <coughs> to be able to be a victorious person for Christ Jesus. Not for me now, for Christ Jesus. Amen. And if we can come to agreement on that, you have not because you ask not. And you have not because you ask amiss. I ask for the gift of the Spirit for no other reason than to glorify Jesus Christ and to lead others to salvation. That's the main thing. We do need to know what is of God and what isn't of God. We're living in perilous times right now. You are. You live, we live in perilous times. The Bible says it. Don't get excited. The Bible says it. Amen. I don't get excited. The Bible says it. I believe it. But now I need the gift to be overcomers in order to be all that I can be for Christ Jesus. Not to live in fear. I don't walk in fear. I, I don't fear because either my Jesus is who He is and He says He is or He's not. Fear is of the devil. Perfect love through Christ Jesus cast us out of fear. I don't have fear. I have common sense, but I don't live in fear. Because Jesus says, I am an overcomer because of Christ Jesus. So am I going to listen to the, that's where the spirit of discernment comes in. Am I going to listen to the enemy and say, oh, I'm afraid of this, or that, or that, or this. Or I'm going to believe in what Jesus says. He says, Read the Bible. And he'll tell you. But if you got the if you got a spirit of fear, I'd get rid of that book right now. I'm not gonna walk in fear. If I walk in fear, I'm defeated. 
I'm defeated before I get out of bed. Oh, if I get out of bed, the wall might fall down. The truck might hit my house. We'll go live way out in the woods. The truck before it hit your house got to hit a tree. Amen. Oh, I, 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 See, don't do all that, 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 that stuff. Just say, Jesus, I believe in you. Now I'm walking in. Amen. Amen. Well, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching messages on how to be victorious. Victorious. Perilous dangers is, is here. But through Christ Jesus, we're overcome. Amen. Amen. We're victorious. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we praise you now. In Jesus' name, bless. In Jesus' name, amen.